the greatest thing about WrestleMania is it's like it's not one night, it's two nights. That's three. Two nights. Um, so you get you know a whole weekend of action, you get a whole weekend of drama, whole weekend of your favorites winning, whole weekend of your booing the villains. And it's two nights of the grandest spectacle in pro wrestling. So with that, you know, in my last video, I broke down night one, WrestleMania. So we're going to break down night two, all the matches announced on it. And who do I think is going to win? So with that, let's get right into it. This is the WrestleMania night two preview. All right. We are uh, now this. I'm not doing these in order. I don't know the order. And I'm not doing them in order I think it'll be. I'm just, I have a list. So we're going to go down the list. Starting off with Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits versus the Final Testament, which is Karrion Cross and Authors of Pain and a Philadelphia Street Fight. You know, this match came about when Car uh, Karrion Cross formed a new group called the Final Testament and bringing back Authors of Pain, which if you haven't seen a picture of, go look it up. They're huge dudes anyway final testament uh star attack uh targeting bobby lashley and street profits and this feud has been going on for a while it hasn't been the most exciting feud it's kind of been dragging for a little bit i mean it's, it's not nothing against the people involved they're all good i think karen cross is probably the most misgimmicked person in the company if this match took place on the kickoff show that probably would have made more sense but you get Bobby Lashley and Karrion Cross on a WrestleMania show, so you can't can't be mad at that. Plus, it's a street fight to where it gives it that little bit of extra juice than a normal six-man tag would. I think it's going to be hard hitting. I'm expecting some blood in this. I think both uh, both teams just go all all out, give us a show. And while I kind of want Bobby Lashley and Street Profits to win. I think the final testament needs to win so much more to be at, to be taken seriously, and I don't think this uh, feud's over. I wish it was. I don't think I don't think it is. So give me final testament to win this Philly street fight, and uh, for Karrion Cross to actually get a marquee win in this company. All right, next we have AJ Styles versus LA Knight. Yeah, this one's been going for a bit. It was ex semi kicked off when AJ Styles. Uh, Got hurt by the, the the bloodline back in the fall, and LA Knight's the one who kind of took AJ Styles' place in that whole thing, leading to a uh, WWE title match at Crown Jewel in November for LA Knight. AJ comes back January-ish, late December, and immediately just goes after Knight saying, hey, you took my spot, you walked over me, blah, 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 blah. And those two have been beefing since, including the, um, they being a part of the WWE title match of war rumble a fatal four-way and it was a bad blood ever since including because la knight was in the men's elimination chamber match in perf aj styles who wasn't even part of the card flying all the way to australia getting in that match and uh beating la knight causing it causing him to lose that match and then flying back home which the thought of somebody sitting in a plane from the usa to australia with like a chair in his hand just like oh i'm gonna beat him I'm gonna beat him. I'm gonna beat him. And then go and do it and fly back home. Just satisfied himself. It's pretty funny. Then, you know, LA Knight's been calling out AJ Styles for a while, challenged him to a match. AJ accepted. Uh, LA Knight went to AJ's house and, you know, beat his ass in his own driveway, got arrested. And as far as a winner, um, it's LA Knight. He, uh, this, if he wins this, I do think it catapults him right into the United States title picture. And AJ can recover from a loss he's aj styles la knight you know he was the hottest superstar of 2023 basically and i think that this is needed to keep the momentum going this is needed to like again justify him being a united states title picture who knows maybe like the world heavyweight title picture uh something like that we'll see but yeah uh i don't think wwe misses opportunity to have 70 000 people hitting the yeah give me la knight to win this all right we have the united states title match which is between champ logan paul randy orton and kevin owens the so logan paul has been champ since crown jewel event in november beating ray mysterio i'm probably in the minority here but while he hasn't been really defending it on 
TV as much. I do think it's been good rain for all the stuff he's been doing, like outside the company, his podcast, his appearances, anything he's holding the title, getting people to look at it. And he did defend it at the Royal Rumble against Kevin Owens, and Kevin Owens almost had it, but got uh, DQ'd when he when Owens used Logan Paul's own brass knuckles against him. So Logan, by technicality, kept the title. And he's been a you know, cocky, slimy heel since then. Again, I, I'm in the minority. I've been, I've been enjoying his reign. And, you know, with uh, the recent announcement that Prime is now the ring sponsor for all major events, WWE uses that to catapult Logan Paul. Not catapult, but keep him going. I think the opportunity is there to continue to move him up, especially now that he's becoming more and more full-time with WWE, not so much a part-timer. I went through the uh, other people, Randy Orton winning to me doesn't make too much sense. Uh, in fact, I think a Randy Orton win is the worst outcome here. Orton doesn't need it. And it hurts Logan Paul and Kevin Owens more than it elevates everyone. Um, Kevin Owens winning makes sense. He's been feuding with Logan for months and months and months. And it'll be a good end to their story. But I think the best outcome here is Logan retaining. Just to hold on to a title. I don't know how long he's going to hold on to a title. But uh, Triple H, who runs creative, loves his long title reigns. And with SummerSlam in uh, Cleveland this year at the Brown Stadium. Logan Paul's from the area. I mean, you put two and two together, it's like. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, give me Logan Paul to retain. And I think a very sneaky match that could steal the show on uh, WrestleMania Sunday. Logan Paul's going to keep his title. Next, we have Bailey versus Io Sky for the WWE Women's title. And much like um, Bianca versus the rest of Damage Control. This one has been semi two years in the making. Like the original damage control was Bailey, Eo Sky, Dakota Kai, and they were inseparable. And then when uh, Eo brought Asuka and eventually Kyrie Sane into the fold, Bailey was kind of like the odd one out, and it was starting to feel that way. And the other, the other girls were gang and talking about her, you know, telling Bailey to go win something. And so she did. Bailey won the 2024. Uh, women's War Rumble match, granting her a title shot this year's WrestleMania. And, you know, when she had enough of the other girls' damage control, she challenged Io Sky, who in turn since then has been just making Bailey's life hell. You know, beating her down basically at any point she can get. So it's about Bailey, the former boss, the architect of the group having to destroy her group because it got too big for her. I think this match is going to be good. It's going to be emotional. EO, while hasn't had the most exciting reign, it's, it's a very good worker between the ropes. Bailey, just total package. Um, so yeah, I don't think, I don't think technically this is going to wow anybody, but doesn't need to. Like I said, it's emotional. It's about two former friends battling for one of the top prizes for women in, in the sport. But give me Bailey to end the reign of EO Sky. Give me Bailey to win this and complete her story against Damage Control against EO Sky. And for Bailey to be the new WWE Women's Champion. Alright, we have Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight title. If you saw my video for night one, which you haven't, go look. Um, Seth Rollins is involved in the main event of him and Cody Rhodes versus The Rock and Roman Reigns. I think that plays a bigger spot that people realize in this. Me, me personally, I think Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre opens the sh uh, night two. And, you know, Seth's gonna be beaten down for a night before, lo losing to the Rock and Roman. Drew's gonna take advantage. I do think we get some bloodline interference, you know, punishing Seth for sticking his nose there. I think we get a uh, um, Damian Priest inter uh, tease with the money in the bank. And we got Drew McIntyre, who for, you know, since uh, Crown Jewel has basically been trying to capture a title, he was unsuccessful there due to interference. 
he was unsuccessful day one and so drew mcintyre's un undergone a character shift he's gotten much darker and at royal rumble he injured cm punk like uh hurt his tricep and he's been making money off of that like with merch with being just a complete asshole cm punk about it he's been a good asshole to uh seth rollins although he he sort of justified because he's like he's like Seth, you know, what are you doing sticking your nose in bloodline business you should be focused on me and our wrestlemania match don't diminish like what you and i are going to do which is true but still you know drew's been an asshole about that and just letting Seth know hey you continue to do this and you're not going to like the result and i don't think he likes the result um i like i said i do think the money in the bank title not money in the bank briefcase gets teased I don't see a cash in here, but I do see Drew McIntyre winning the World Heavyweight title at WrestleMania. And then last, but holy hell not least, we have Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes for the WWE title. And again, previous night one main event, Rock and Roman win, Rock and Roman win which makes this a uh, bloodline rules for a title, which basically just be, uh, uh, anything can go. Been a year or so in the making. And this has been a year or so in the making, you know, last year, WrestleMania 39, Cody Roman, uh, Cody lost after Solo, uh, Sokoa spiked him and interfered. And, you know, Cody's been crawling his way back for revenge. And he got it when he won the 2024 Royal Rumble, getting his shot. You know, I gone over the bill between Rock and Cody, Seth, Roman, all of them. But now we're here. Cody finally gets his shot again at the title. And with this being bloodline rolls and those qualifications, I am expecting the most overbooked symphony of destruction, symphony of nonsense add to era style ever. I'm expecting Jimmy Uso to get involved. I'm expecting Solo to get involved. I'm expecting Paul Heyman to get involved. I'm expecting Jay Uso to get involved. And Seth Rollins to get involved. I'm expecting, you know, we could see old foes from uh, The Rock's past get involved. The Rock will be there. I'm expecting Steve Austin, uh, John Cena, all that. This is going to be the most overbooked shit we have seen in a while. And the great thing about th this being overbooked is that it makes sense. All these people want to take the bloodline down. All these people want to take the title away from Roman. And so it's going to be like 10 people just out there just fighting. I know people online are saying it's going to be like Avengers Endgame, which it better well be. This has been, you know, this has been the best opportunity for someone to dethrone Roman, who has ha held a world title since August, September of 2020. This is the best shot. We, Cody Crybaby, just want to see Cody win the damn thing. Now, there is a chance of Roman retaining because um, Roman has been world champ for 1,300 some days, something like that. And uh, the next closest consecutive reign is Hulk Hogan from like the 80s when he held it for 16 something. But in order for Roman to beat that, he would have to hold a title to late September. And yeah, WWE loves their records. It's very tempting to keep Roman champ uh, until after that, which will most likely to keep him champ till next year's WrestleMania. I don't know, it's, it's tempting, it's there, but I don't think it happens. I think we uh, get to the end of the night, we get to the last part of the match. I think the ref counts one, two, three. Freaking Cody Rhodes has his hand raised in the air and is your new WWE champion. I think. We get a new champ. We get the downfall of the bloodline. And Cody Rose ushers in a new era of WWE. I don't think that's the last like sh camera shot of the night. Because I see, I don't know which way it's going, that part. But I do see either Rock turning on Roman or Roman turning on Rock at the end. You know, they lost. Oh, uh, one turns on the other. And they're setting up for, you know, who knows, SummerSlam, down the line, WrestleMania next year. But I do think one of them turns on each other at the end of the night. And that's the last thing we see. But the main part here is Cody Rhodes is going to be your new WWE 
champion. To the recap, I have Final Testament winning, LA Knight, Logan Paul retains, Bailey's new champ, Drew new champ, Cody new champ. Excitement level is that is going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments who do you think's winning and how far off am I? Let me know who you think is going to be the MVP of the night. For me, I think it's going to be Drew. I think he is going to show up, show out, be his slimy self, and give a, an all time match versus Seth, a battered Seth Rollins to capture a title. I think match and match and is going to be the WWE title match. Um, technical wise, it's probably the United States triple threat match, but as far as overbooked, Carney mess it's going to be that WWE uh, title match and it's like I said it's going to be a, the most beautiful car wreck you've ever seen I cannot wait but yeah we won't know until we watch um, those are my predictions uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the video it helps me out tremendously as I'm trying to grow this uh, I'm at it's heartfelt on all socials and yeah catch you in the next video I'm heartfelt peace